Hi, uh, good evening everybody and welcome to another episode of the V Brown Bag US. Um, this evening we are with Greg Sutcliffe. Uh, we are going to be talking about an introduction to Foreman. A um, cu couple of quick uh, notes. Get in on the conversation. I will be monitoring the, the Twitter hashtag V Brown Bag. Um, you guys know what it is obviously. Um, like I said before, our, our guest this evening is Greg Sutcliffe. His uh, Twitter handle is this mess of letters right here. Uh, Greg, you wanna you wanna say what that is? You wanna pronounce that? Yeah, it's uh, it's vaguely Celtic background, so it's pronounced Gengilvan. Gengilvan. All right, it sounds like a Scotch. I'm I'm all I'm all for it. Um, <laughs> he's he's at the uh, theforeman.org. Uh, obviously, I'm Chris Williams at Mistwire, and you can find me on Mistwire.com. So, without any further ado, let me change the presenter over to Mr. Greg. And away All we right go. Then. That should be working. Yes, I can see your screen now. How's that? Yep. Marvelous. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much for the introduction, Chris. Uh, thanks for the warm welcome and, and the invitation to come and speak. Very excited to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I live in Scotland, so it's half past midnight here. Uh, sorry? <laughs> Did you say something? Oh, I, I, sa sorry, I, said, we're, we're, I said we're happy to have you. Oh, okay, sorry, um, I guess my your audio cuts over mine or something, it's fine. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yes, so I live in Scotland, it's half past midnight, um, but I'm a night owl, so this is not a problem for me. Um, I, I love doing this kind of thing. So yes, I'm Greg Sutcliffe, Ken Gilvin on Twitter, um, also at Foreman Project if you want to talk to the project in general. Foreman.org is our website. I have the great pleasure of being the community lead uh, for the Foreman community. Uh, I work for Red Hat, who pay a lot of the developers on Foreman, not all of them by any means, but... And now uh, I've been here about six years as, as a user, as a, as a community guy. So uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about Foreman, what it is, what it's for. Uh, I'm going to spend about probably 10 to 15 minutes on that, tops, um, just some quick slides. And then I'm going to dive in, we're going to do a demo, but it's going to be possibly a little bit more unusual than that. Uh, most demos are canned, they've been very carefully prepared and scripted, this is nothing of the sort. This is a live install. I've set up a blank environment, we're going to set up Foreman, we're going to take it from a a single clean VM to managing the whole infrastructure in about 45 minutes if it all goes well. If it doesn't, I have a lot of VM snapshots, but we'll 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 get to that. So um, before I get rolling, just want to give props to Timo, uh, one of our community guys. Uh, he works for DM over in Germany. These slides are mostly his. He has saved me a couple of hours' work by letting me use his slide. They just tweaked them in a couple of places, and so huge huge props to him uh, for that. You know, this is open source, so credit where credit is due. All right. So let's talk about Foreman. What is Foreman? It's, uh, the, this is the marketing statement on our website. Right? It's a lifecycle management tool for all your types of servers, and we give you automation power. Right? We give you the ability to get rid of repetitive tasks, deal with orchestration, deal with provisioning, deal with configuration management, deal with it wherever it happens to be, in your offices, in your data centers, in the cloud, whatever. That's a lot of things wrapped up in a very short sentence, so let's break it down a little what do we mean by lifecycle management? Well, what we mean is there's more going on here than just what code your server runs, right? If this is a web server or an application server or whatever, there's more going on here. It's got to be created. Uh, that might be hardware. It might be bare metal. So you're placing an order. You've got to rack it up, get it into the system, get it provisioned, get an OS on the disk. Then you can put your application on it. Or this might be virtual. So again, we might still have to do some provisioning if it's you know bare metal-like. So uh, libvirt, uh, Zen, some VMware types, and you still have to get an OS on a blank disk, or it could be image-based, so again, you could be using templates, or you might be using something like AWS or DigitalOcean, whatever. Something has to be created. Once it's up, we then need to deploy some stuff to it, so that's configuration management. Puppet is our best integration, but we have others. I'll come to that. You want to drive that. You want to get reporting on that, you want to see that that's happening, make sure it's all going well, get some overview of the state of your infrastructure. So this is your operations section, this is where you manage the day-to-day -day of your service, and then a server reaches the end of its usefulness. In the case of a VM, this is very easy, we just destroy it, but there's cleanup to do. DNS records, DHCP leases, uh, puppet certificates, this kind of thing. There's, there's some actions that need to be taken. So it's the whole thing from the very moment you come up with the server to the very last second before you delete it. We want to help you deal with all of that and take away a lot of the pain that comes with that. 
So how do we do that? This is a really horrible slide, and I'm not expecting you to get too much from it, but I put it here to, to make a point. Foreman is a web app. It's a Rails application. So you put it on a, on a host somewhere in your infrastructure, and it sits there and it does things. And the way it does things is it, we have a thing called the Foreman proxy. So uh, if you can see my cursor, I'll just point out these boxes along here are all different Foreman proxies. We're trying to phase out the name smart proxy because smart is just horribly overloaded and usually wrong. So Foreman proxy. And the, the idea here is that you have one Foreman. You have a, a single source of truth for your infrastructure, right? You want to know, go to one place and find out about things. So one Foreman. But it needs to manage lots of things. You might have many subnets, many domains, different compute providers, lots of things to manage. So we try and put these lightweight form and proxies wherever there are things that need managing. So it's a proxy in the true sense of the word. It's an agent, not a reverse proxy, as has become the standard. So the idea here is that you can segment your networks. And Foreman just has these very clearly defined RESTful APIs to talk to. If it needs to create a DNS record or it needs to create a puppet certificate, if it needs to do anything like that, it goes and talks to a smart proxy. But you know, there's other ways we interact with it as well. So you can see we've got um, information coming in from Puppet um, or you know, Salt, Chef. So we can process reports, we can process facts, inventory data, we can talk to compute resources, we can do things like LDAP, and obviously we have UIs and um, command line tools and APIs as well. So it's a big thing. It's complex. That's why there's a demo is there. I'm not going to spend too long on this. Let's have a look at those three stages again then. Provisioning. What can we provision? Well, bare metal. Um, not everyone does bare metal anymore. I go to a lot of talks where everyone's talking about one cloud provider or another. But ultimately, the cloud is just someone else's servers. So some of us are still doing bare metal out there. If you're doing bare metal, you may be interested. Otherwise, uh, we can talk to all sorts of compute resources. So you can see a big list there, things that are bare metal-like, as I said. So Xen, Libvert, some uses of VMware or more cloud-like things, OpenStack, Rackspace, AWS, and so on. There's, there's probably more by now because this is pluggable. We have a huge plug-in ecosystem. Um, so there's probably compute resources that I'm not mentioning. But yeah, you can provision most things uh, from Foreman. And if you can't, it's fairly easy to extend. What types of provisioning do we support? Just breaking that down. So bare metal-like, that's um, Pixie Boot with a DHCP record. We can manage all of that stuff. Getting the right files onto your TFTP server. So obviously, you want a Mac file there. You want in RDs, VM learners files. They're all ready to go. Form and provide sets them up in the right place on that subnet. Get it all up and running. We have a templating engine within the UI, so you can handle um, different kickstarts or pre-seed files, auto asked whatever. We support a ton of OSs for provisioning, even Windows, actually, uh, which is interesting to try and set up. Um, all of that can be done, all of that handled for you. No need to do anything. It's literally click a button and the server builds. Or it could be image-based stuff. So broadly speaking here, you've got two forms. If, you're, if your compute provider uh, supports cloud in it, then we can send user data. Um, or we can SSH into the host when it's up and running and configure it that way. So there's a step uh, you can probably uh, appreciate. When you finish building a host and it's got the OS on the disk, but it isn't yet hooked up to your configuration management, there is a one-time configuration step, right? That has to happen somehow. If you're doing uh, a network install, you can embed that in your Kickstart or your Preseed. But if you're doing something with images, then obviously you have to configure it somehow. So we can use cloud in it or SSH. And for some more advanced use cases, if you're a very locked down environment, if you only use USB sticks to boot your hardware servers or whatever, we can support that as well. We can write you a dedicated USB image for a particular host or for a group of hosts. Talking about orchestration. So, okay, we've done the provisioning. What can we orchestrate? There's more than this very short list here, but these are the ones that generally make people excited. So creating DNS records, A records, PTR records, quad A records for IPv6 are in the latest version of Foreman now. Again, thanks to Timo. Um, DHCP, so um, reservations is what we write uh, rather than leases. Uh, this means your host is always going to get the same IP address. So it, it's, it's a pseudo static without you having to do any configuration, right? You just enable the HCP, form and writes the reservations. Everything just stays static. If you really don't like the HCP in your provisioning environment or your production environment, you can absolutely do static as well. But DHCP is the default, and we manage it reasonably nicely. 
and configuration management, so creating public certificates or, or whatever needs to happen for a particular configuration management system. And again, cleaning that up at the end of the server's life. Configuration management Puppet comes by default. It was our original integration. It still remains our best supported integration. If you're Puppet users, there's a lot to like here. But it's by no means the only one. We have plugins available for Chef, Salt, and Ansible. And these are reasonably popular, so they get quite a lot of support. Uh, if you're interested in looking at those, I'm going to demo Puppet tonight, but if you're interested in one of the others, do come and have a look, uh, come and talk to us, otherwise um, that's what you're going to see, Puppet. Monitoring, this is, I don't like the word monitoring here, I would rather say reporting. Monitoring makes me think of Nagios, right, it makes me think of alerts and up-to-the-minute information. That's not what we're talking about here, but in terms of looking at your Puppet reports, looking at your inventory data, uh, the facts that come out of Puppet, doing things like um, pie chart distributions of different things, maybe um, your architectures or your operating systems. You can also trend that over time. So you can do things, if you're doing a migration, for example, you could have a nice trend of EL6 versus EL7 or something like that. So there's, there's some limited um, capabilities around reporting, uh, the most useful being your actual configuration management reports, uh, because quite often that's quite hidden. Puppet, for example, really doesn't show you the reports uh, out of the box. It, they're, they're stashed on the Puppet Master in text files, and that's all you get. You need something to show that to you. Some features I'm not going to show tonight, but that are worth knowing about. So we have a reasonable raft of enterprise level support. So we do support things like LDAP for your um, user logins and hand off, you know, sign on via Apache and things like that. We have ACLs or, or role-based access controls, so you can create uh, groups of users that can see different things, have different permissions, view only, whatever. Everything I show you tonight will be done as the admin user. I am God, I can do everything, but perhaps if we have time at the end and there's interest, I can maybe show some of the role stuff. Um, and then we have a feature called organizations and locations, which is kind of similar, but the idea here is you can group entire sets of resources, so you, maybe you've got two data centers, and this particular group of logins shouldn't be able to see anything to do with data center two. They only manage data center one. So you can do things like that. There's more, but I'm just giving you the highlights. And finally, before we really get onto the fun stuff, because I'm, I'm already coming up to the end of my 15 minutes. So um, ways to interact with it. I'm going to mostly show you the GUI tonight. But we also have a command line tool called Hammer, um, which is pretty full featured and is again pluggable, so you can extend it. And we have a fully supported API, so if you want to write wrappers around that, you absolutely can. And I do know people in the community who are just using the Foreman proxy without even bothering with Foreman because they like that REST API uh, to talk to DHCP or DNS or TFTP or, or what have you. And again, the proxy is pluggable as well, so you can extend it for your own uses. And the key here really is Foreman is great at getting you about 80-90% done, and that last mile, it's pretty easy to write plugins, and we have extensive documentation on this. The key watchword when it comes to Foreman, and this is what I'm going to show you in a minute, is optional. Pretty much everything is optional in Foreman out of the box. You don't have to use any of it in particular. So I know someone, I was literally chatting to someone an hour ago who's only using it for Puppet reports. Nothing else, no provisioning, no orchestration. All he cares about is being able to see Puppet reports from 60,000 hosts. Equally, I know people who don't use Puppet and are only using it for provisioning and a mix of everything in between. So it's all out there, it can all be used, and you can write plugins to take it that last little bit. We also don't mandate green field. We don't, you don't have to start from scratch with this. You can drop this into your existing infrastructure and the foreman won't touch anything by default. You have to turn it on, and it's configurable per resource. So you could say, OK, I've got two subnets. I want you to manage stuff in my sandbox, but I don't want you to touch anything in the office network. Flexibility, bring it in, take it at your pace, turn on the features as you need them. That being said, I'm going to show you most things in the next sort of 45 minutes. So that's the end of the slide. Really fast whistle stop cover of the features. Hopefully the demo is going to be far more interesting, but I'll just pause for a second and see if Chris wants to pick me up on anything before I get started with the demo. You are doing a live demo, sir. You are crazy. Um, no, uh, we, we are good. Um, I, I've, I've, um, I've, been, I've been feeling a couple things in the background, but uh, we, mm -hmm. we, are, we are good to go for the live demo. 
Fantastic. And I'm not as crazy as you think because actually all the VMs have got snapshots. So if anything fails, <laughs> I should be able to. Re I ran through all of this this afternoon and uh, and tested it all and took snapshots as I went. So the various stages of completion of the project that we're about to work through have already been done at least once. Gotcha. All, all right. right. Let's let's get started. I'm going to jump to the to a web browser first of all, and I'm going to bring up the form.org website. So the way we right up here, and we select an OS. And I'm going to use CentOS. Debian and Ubuntu as well. So pick your poison. Uh, pretty straightforward. We, if you want, uh, pop it. Um, you'll need so let me make a form and release our PM from our repos and then we need to our own little form and install it. It is not a bash script. <laughs> let me be clear about that up front. I really dislike the whole curl and pipe to bash idiom that's been quite popular in recent times. Form and installer is written in Puppet. This means, one, you can go and inspect everything it's doing quite easily. It's not too arcane if you're familiar with Puppet. But second, it's also idempotent. I can't tell you how many times I've seen bash scripts fail and be pretty much unrecoverable. You certainly can't run the same script again. With Foreman, at least, if anything goes wrong, you can always just run the Foreman installer again, and you can use it to enable features later on because the rest of it won't be touched. And I'm actually going to give you a demo of that a little bit later on. However, I am not going to run the form installer for you right now. Reason being, it's quite slow. It has to install Foreman, Apache, Postgres, yada, yada, yada. And I am on a rural internet connection. It took about 25 minutes when I did it this afternoon. So I have already snapshotted uh, the VM. And um, so hopefully this is big enough. This is our form VM. So let me give you a little look around the network. So what we need network. 192.168.122.1. So this is a libvirt network, but I'm using it to simulate a real subnet in someone's infrastructure. So dot one is the gateway, dot two is my Foreman VM, and that is all there is on this network at the moment. I'm going to run the Foreman installer again just to prove my item. In fact, tell you what, I'm going, to, I'm going to edit a file just to prove it. If anyone's not familiar with our uh, which which you don't want to turn on. Form it. So, uh, and I'm going to go with minus V. So there's a couple of flags you can use here. Minus I will put it in interactive mode, which allows you to answer questions about how you want things configured. Minus V is verbose. And minus N is no op. So if you're familiar with Puppet, you'll know there's a no op mode where it makes no changes. This is particularly useful if you want to install this on an existing server where there's already like websites configured or something, and you just want to check what it's going to do. I'm going to go to V, and we'll let that run. So the form installer sets up everything you need out of the box, and not, not just the RPMs from our repos, but also a Puppet server, also Apache, also Passenger, uh, all that kind of stuff. So you can get them out of the box. Now, going before, I would just four days minimum. Master done. I would allow you don't have to have the Puppet Master on the same server as Foreman. I'm going to do so uh, for ease of use tonight, and that's the default kind of all-in-one install. But certainly, you know, if you're breaking this out in a larger infrastructure, you can have as many Puppet Masters as you like. You put a smart proxy on them, everything's good. Foreman's happy. So you can see there's the Puppet log there. There's diff. Took out the thing I changed, put it back to where it should be, and now we're just restarting Foreman. So, that's the Foreman installer. That's how you absolutely get started with Foreman. Get yourself a clean VM, get our quick start, run it. That's Foreman up and running. And if I go over here, go to the front page. I was just checking, screen sharing earlier. So let's take a quick tour of the UI, just to show you. You get the status of your hosts. You only have one host, but there you go. Um, and then things like and create customized dash the users and extensive. Quick look at the reporting stuff. So uh, statistics, facts, etc. All here. 
reports will come to in a minute. Everything about hosts, architectures, installation, media, so objects. So lots set up for you out of the box. Uh, I mentioned starting pre seed being templated, so you can edit these templates or create your own. Uh, conversion management here, so I will show more about this in a few minutes. And infrastructure again, so nets, domains. If you use something like free IPA, then realms are supported as well. And all the usual goodies over here under administration, so user groups, roles, LDAP configuration, etc. Okay. That's an installation done really fast because I didn't want to spend too long on this. But as you can see, the installer has now finished. And um, this is the important bit. This is what you'll get at the end. Need that you will get login, which I've officially already stashed, but log in in your browser. You'll also have a proxy at uh, on the same box, but on a different port, 8443 by default. here you can see it's already registered in Foreman as well and we have some features um, we can query this so look at something like let's, uh, let's have a look at this here can look at my certificates and right now I only have one certificate that's valid for five years that's the puppet default so you can manage your puppet certificates here I will be showing you automation of the puppet certificate stuff but you can also manually sign certificates for clients here as well Okay, any questions on install the stuff, or shall I get on with Puppet? Uh, no questions yet. We are good, sir. Fantastic work. Magical. Magical. All right, so that was an easy part of the demo. Let's move on to something more challenging. So let's, let's run Puppet. Nothing like that happen yet. It's got no configuration. But for those of you who are already Puppet running. Ah, yeah, that's already running there. Uh, let me stop it. Uh, is that running as a service? See, live demo, I think 11. Let's just kill it off. It's fine. Um, and now we can run Puppet Agent minus TV. So those of you who know Puppet will know you have to give it a manifest. You have to give it a set of um, state tools. I haven't given it anything. The way Foreman installer configures things out of the box is to make Foreman what's known as an ENC, an external node classifier. And what this, we give Puppet, Puppet asks Foreman for what to apply. And at the moment, there's no configuration. If we go and have a look at all our hosts, and we have a look at our we've got down here, and there's just nothing in the at all. Empty. This data goes, oh, no classes, I'm down here, nothing. Else. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. That's not managing NPP. It's a classic intro to Puppet. Um, because it's a very simple service. It's what's called class. You've got a package to install, a config file to write, and a service to manage. And that's it. Right? So NTP, very, very easy. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring up another couple of clients. So I'm going to look over here. I'm just going to start up. Two more clients that coming up now. These, the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you something interesting. I talked about how things in Formula are optional and how you don't have to bring in provisioning if you're not ready to yet on your network. And what I'm going to show you is how that works in practice. So what you can imagine here is I've just fired up two more hosts that Foreman knows nothing about. They're on the same network, but apart from that, Foreman has no idea that they exist whatsoever. Well, that, well the Up. Wrong here we go. Somebody knows we've got a whole on disk, but Foreman doesn't know about it yet. Foreman caches information with masters. So we'll tell it to him. Put it here, and you can find the NTP module, which has three classes in it. So I can take that, I can take this, take that. Nice and simple. And I now have this NTP class. Now I can put this directly to uh, my host, but I'm going to show you a concept of host groups. This is some slide above. Puppet, and um, Puppet doesn't have the concept of host group, but if you use something like Yara or one of the other uh, Puppet ENCs, it's quite a common feature. I'm going to call it base. I'm going to give it an environment. Uh, now, a host group informs more. Uh, we'll come back to host groups when we talk about provisioning, but it really acts like a collection of defaults. You can apply a host group 
uh, to a host when, you, when you're creating a new host and it will fill out a lot of the, the form for you. For now we're going to just restrict ourselves to the first two tabs and we'll come back to the rest of this later. Now I'm going to host into that now part of the base. So if I YAML, I expect something different and in P class. Actually, there's a bug in it, and I'm expecting where but it's actually quite a useful thing to do that will allow me to show you a little bit about the profit report. There we go, that failed. Now I'm going to do labs, uh, code, uh, environments, production, modules, NTP, manifest params, line 28. This should be quoted. There we go. And we'll run it again. Oh, hello. Oh, wait a moment. I bet I know I've not got. Yeah, okay. I need to um, install. Um, um, oh, that won't work. That's a typo. So, um, the fact uh, that this thing is trying to uh, do a, a comparison, a numerical comparison, and we can't. I'll have a look and see if our other clients are online yet. So we don't have DNS management yet. That's going to be the next part of the demo. So I have to use IP addresses here. So that's the first one, and that's the second one. Yeah. as well. Okay. So I've got my hosts, and these don't have puppet yet. The informer knows nothing about them. Got finished. Excellent. Let's try this again, and then we'll have a quick look at puppet reports and facts, and then we'll come back to um, new host management. What are we doing for time? I want to be. Yeah, okay, we're doing okay. Are we how strict are we on time, Chris? Um do we, do we need to finish in an hour? We are we're not strict. Are you kidding me? This is the okay, we fly by the seat of our pants. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I need to have to fish hard on an hour, right? Okay, let's run correctly. You can see um standard puppet output, right? So we've got can be created. We've changed NTP conf. Uh, that bunch of stuff, and now we've also done some discomfort. So Puppet is doing its job. Let's see how that looks in form. So firstly, this is our screen. Oh, I've been logged out. Back in. There we go. So you can see we have times times Um NTP will fix that, no doubt. So Let's have a look at one of these. So I'm going here and I can say, oh, interesting, um, something went wrong. I can I can filter it. This was a very long report. Filter that, and I can have a look at the problem. Similarly, I can look at this. So we can say diff of the config file. Um, Removes on that. So, nice view, more global view. So, if we go back to the dashboard now, uh, we can see we have one host, uh, which is class is out of sync at the moment because it hasn't its report is dated wrong. Its its time is wrong. Uh, let's just see if that's been fixed. Does that help the date? So again, so nothing will change now because we haven't done anything to the host. There we go. So we've got good hosts in the last 35 minutes. And it is. If we hover over the tick here, no changes because there's nothing in the most recent. So that's a very quick look at reports. While I'm here, I'll show you facts as. So I can I filtered to a specific host. 
and you'll set up something like the address. We have all the activities for this host. Um, so there's, there's it there. So you've got all this nice inventory management. Let's bring some more hosts into the picture. That's interesting, I think. So what we're going to do. Yes, and we'll pop agent minus TV, and we have to give it the server. So by default, Puppet looks for a host called Puppet in your DNS. I don't have one, um, but I did add this machine to the hosts file on these hosts. Foreman.test.foreman.org, and we'll just grab that string. And go on this one. So now what I expect is this will create certificates. We've no automation here, right? Because Foreman doesn't know about these hosts, so it's got no way to help you automate it. Now you, there are ways to do this. For yourself, uh, Puppet has a concept of an auto sign file, uh, various other things. So you could make this easier if you've got a large number of hosts to bring into the fold. But Foreman can't automate this bit because it doesn't know these hosts exist. When we let Foreman take over the provisioning, then we'll see a, a different picture. So uh, we've got that. Let's go back. Oh, so I could sign these on the command line. Puppet, it's And I should say, yeah, one sign, two waiting sign. So let's move on. Give that sec to load. Here we are, two pending certificates. So that's the here in play. Forms reaching out. Proxy say, hey, you manage the puppet master here. Go and sign these certificates for me. And if we see, we can see that it's signed just to confirm it. So let's jump up. What happens next is in Oh, sorry. No. Sorry, so, I said so I said cool. <laughs> what happens? Okay, cool. So um, so what happens next is interesting. Um, because we have this communication between the puppet master and foreman, we can do interesting. Firstly, uh, we have the yeah, ENC as a script, and it calls out to former, but we use it for other things, and we use it to upload facts. So that is one that one source of data going into Foreman. And the second is the reports, as you've already seen. Now, if Foreman receives either of these things, facts or reports, for a host it doesn't know, it will create one. So if I... Uh, you can get that. And still, it's audio... Host group, of course, they don't have any computing. So I'm done. Well, that's worth mentioning is this area. You'll see it exactly once when the host is created. And the reason for that is Puppet actually makes two calls to the ENC, not one, and it doesn't upload the facts until the second one. So we can't create a host until such time as we've received those facts. So the first very, very, very first call ever is going to fail because there's no host there. The minute we receive the facts, we create the host. The second call succeeds, everything works as normal. So if you see that error message, do not worry. It is absolutely fine. So apart from that little hiccup, everything is working beautifully. So let's let's apply our NTP. Everything, change group, put in place, and that's NTP. Go back and... I'm just going to wait for this to run. What well, actually was running? Let's see if we can spot it. So we've got three hosts at the moment. See if they finish running. I'll get from here because it's more interesting. It's getting boring now. Let's. Well, obviously, they'll install NTP exactly, and then they will happily report back to Foreman and we can see that happening. While they're running, I'm going to use copy here. This is well and good. How often do you actually apply a class with no changes to it? Right? Pretty much never. So how do we interact with Puppet? I'm going to show you two ways to do it. This is all the parameters that the
actually should not be a right. So you can see they. And here's the default that's come in from the Puppet Manifest. So you can see we have an array of standard. Options you do it like this, or you can click this button here. You want to have a specific use case in mind for one particular host. Um, don't mess with it. Leave the ENC alone. So I'm going to check that. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add what we call a matcher. Now this is, I'm going to do a little bit. So you can match open, so you default to these four options, if you just group. Now it's a hierarchy, a bit like Hira. And from there you can add more on a particular fact or a particular thing within Foreman like the subnet, you can add here uh, and you can you can use that as your matches. I'm going to do a very simple one. I'm going to go for this. That's the one of my two hosts, right? And I'm going to say that for this specific server, let me just grab this string here because it's I'm going to this in here. Um, and I'm going to delete one of the hosts. So our parameters start with the old flag unchecked. By default, we don't mess with the puppet parameters because it usually causes more trouble than it's worth. But when you know there are parameters you need to manage from, from your ENC, this is how to get started. You have to come and check them. Once they are checked, however, you can have a slightly different approach. So that's vbrown bag one has an override. If it's because someone else control it, someone to get onto the provision. And if we go into here, so this is just slightly more I'd be interested. You can come to this parameters. I just need to have some issues. So we do slash ends. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. So there's my array. And again, I'm going to delete a different host. There we go. So that looks like a valid array to me. And I'm going to save that. So you've got this flexible system for messing with class parameters, and you can write really arbitrary stuff in here. You can even embed code into these and have it evaluated when the ENC is called. So really, really powerful, really flexible. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. Um, you can pass entire to um, you know create resources and things like this. So as you can see, this did event run. So let's go and have a quick look at our reports. Just want to show you a little bit about filtering. So here's the reports. So we've got lots of things as we expect. This will show to you. We can do something like uh, I can put NTP as free to search. Oh, I think I have to get rid of this as well. Oh, really? Okay. This will change since I last played with that. I didn't test earlier today. But in general, you ought to be able to do that. Um, ah, it's within page. Um, so you can do all sorts of fun things. You can get rid of uh, so no errors, um, but also warning. You get the idea. Lots of fun things going on. And if we look at the dashboard, we see. Uh, perhaps let's do let's quickly do facts. Let's look at maybe the memory. Uh, memory, a memory size. Here we go. Let's do a memory size. So very simple pie chart. Enough of it. Any questions, Chris? Uh, no, we are we are excellent, sir, and um, you're doing a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. Right. Let's make this more interesting. Hmm. Let's let's do the bit that can really fail. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to show you provisioning. This bit's easy. This bit's easy. This always works. The next bit is provisioning. We're now going to mess with the network. So what I'm going to show you. We already have a TFTP server actually it comes by default because that doesn't really interfere with anything, but we don't enable DNS and DHCP by default. So I'm going to add them. Um, I disabled the DNS mask that comes with WebVert anyway. So um, there's nothing that we can conflict with on this subnet. So I'm going to add them. Now, Foreman comes with a setup tool for this. It's actually a plugin, but we ship it by default. I will give you a proviso on this one. Um, it only works well for simple networks. That's not to say Foreman can't manage very complicated setups of many, many multiple subnets, 
but this tool is really aimed at a single subnet. So it's great for that initial sandbox all in one, get used to how Foreman works, but when you're ready to roll this out in production, you probably want to do this a different way. But by then you'll be more familiar with Foreman anyway. So this is a multi-step thing. We pick a network. So this is my 192. We're now going to create some necessary objects. So we have a domain, test.form.org, and I'm going to call this internal. This is a subnet, so it's IPv4.0.0. I'm going to use Google as a backup so backup DNS. Now I have reasons not to. There is a pop-up here to talk about it. And by this uh, factors into the templates if you're doing submit that. Now what happens is this. Do you remember how I mentioned I don't remember any options you gave it? previously. So we can recall it with some additional options. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And what this plugin does is that you want to run on your phone. So hopefully it's all right. I'm let this run. Um, now what we have to let this run. We need um, the smart proxy to register its additional features. And so we're just going to give that a couple of minutes. So this is installing ISC DHCP bind um, it's making sure that the FTP is enabled. You can see it's got FTP on second line. Um, that should have been the, the default anyway. Um, and a few other things. So you can see it's all, all what you'd expect. So the interface is the NS3, the network is correct, the DNS zone, the reverse DNS zone. It's tried to calculate as much as it can from things like fact data and the, the additional questions that it asks them. So uh, you'll notice I didn't put minus V this time, so we're getting all the output with, uh, on one line with a progress bar, just a little bit neater. Once that's finished, we can actually go and do some provisioning. Now, while that's running, I am going to come over here. I'm going to um, close these off for the moment because we don't need them. These were our pop agents, and we've kept on with these. But I'm going to create a new VM. So I'm going to a new VM. This is me creating a fake physical. So it's network boot. And we might as well tell. And I'll keep it a gig, that's fine. And I'm going to have to create custom storage here. And I want to do all of them, that's fine. And I only want five gigs, I'm crazy. And in fact, save those. But I have to have that map to control how it boots. Now, there are ways around this. If people are interested in this, we can talk about this at the end. Um, there are plugins to do sort of metal as a service and automated discovery and that kind of thing, you know, booting all of your unknown hosts into a RAM disk and all that kind of thing. But we don't ship that by default, so I need the MAC address. Let's see where we're at. Is that finished? So Oh, Greg, you're uh, you're you're cutting out a little bit. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there you, uh, you're back a little bit. I'm back. I'm back. I'm going to create this. Um. Oh, I, just got on break. I think it's I think it's Levert that's doing it. Am I, am I okay at the moment? Um, uh, just just now, yes. I think it also happens between screens. Get with as quickly as possible. Ah, okay, that might be. Yeah, I guess it's a bandwidth thing. As I say, I live in rural Scotland, right? So my internet connection is like really terrible uploads. So it's like one meg upload. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it's not great for 920 resolution up uh, screen broadcasting, but we seem mm. to be getting away with it. Okay, so let's continue. I'm, I'm creating an OS here, a CentOS OS with a with a, an installation media, and now we're pretty much done here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the host group. So this is created the default host group, provision from foreman.thing. I'm just going to rename that as provision. 
I'm going to give it a pop environment. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the base config that we did earlier into this one. So there's my NTP. But let's have a look at the rest of it. Network doesn't want to talk to me today for some reason. Um, oh, there it goes, back now. So I've got a domain here, IPv subnet. I don't have any IPv6 on this network. I don't use free IPA, so I can't fill these in. But you might have use for that. And operating system, so 64-bit, CentOS, CentOS Mirror, a particular template, and we'll set a root password as well. And as we know, everything else is So, so I don't and in this case, default for the network and the operating system. These can be overridden when you create a new host, but it just serves to save you filling out a lot of fields. And now what I'm going to do is just quickly do a bit of cleanup. So all of these tokens change group to provision. And go back and get the other one. I could have made provision a child with base. You can do nesting as well, and it inherits through the host groups, but it's not worth talking about right now. Okay, ready to create a host. I'm going to switch back to libvirt and quickly get away with it. If I cut out for a few seconds, you already know what I'm doing, right? So. All right. So here we go. Pixie. All the generic. Okay. I've created a disk. Uh, that one. Customize. I want this I get to wait nicely sorry were you asking me something sorry uh, my, is my audio still okay it's not chopping out right uh, it, it, it was it was chopping out there for a bit Okay, but it's it's back now. It's definitely it's definitely that screen. Sounds like um, it. Yep. So yeah. Okay, I'll avoid that screen as much as possible. <laughs> I was hoping to show, I was hoping to show you it actually booting up and booting into the installer, but I'll keep that to an absolute minimum because that All seems right. to be causing us a problem. Okay, so this form. Um, this is the new host form. So we won't have seen this yet because our existing host came were created by the puppet reports. So here we go. Right, we can provision. Uh, we've got bare metal. Um, Probably say, so I've, I've selected my host group and it's filled out everything for me. NTP is here. You know I can't remove it. It comes from the host group. My interfaces are here. I'll come back for that in a second. I don't need to worry about the address. I'll come in later. Uh, that to the proxy says, hey, give me a free IP. And we want it managed so it will create. So one thing I'm going to check quickly because I saw plug earlier with the provisioning system with that, with that plugin I showed you. Yeah, we haven't set that. So for splits, it's record creation two directions. The domain gets the A records and the subnet gets the PTR records. So if I don't have a proxy set here, I won't get any A records. That is important if you're managing multiple subnets and you only want foreman to mess with. So likewise, I can go to the subnet, just quickly show you that while I'm here. So, okay, DSP proxy, DSP proxy, reverse DNS proxy. If these are unset, Foreman won't try and manage records for that particular thing on that particular resource. Okay, so let's check everything else. Parameters are here. We're with our NTP. Let's go. So we immediately go back to the host page, but you can see it now says pending installation. So I'm going to switch to up to the VM desktop very quickly and just boot it up and let you see it kick off into the installer and then I'll come away from that and we'll, we'll carry on talking. There it goes. I don't know if you can still hear me, but you can see it's booting into the CentOS installer now. Um, I'm not going to let that finish. Getting back to normal now? Um, yes, a little bit, somewhat. Okay, so that you saw it booting into the CentOS installer there. So Form's already got that under control. Uh, 
in um, here, we can actually see that we've already downloaded the inner ID and the VM Linux, so the proxy did that for us via wget. It only does that once. If the file's already there, it won't touch them. Um, and then we, if we look in CFG, we can see the address. So there's a default file. Um, that's local boot. On time at local, local boot. So any network-enabled machines on your network by default aren't going to get messed with. But if we look at the specific MAC address of the machine we've created, you can see it's set to boot into the CentOS installer. Now, to show you that this is properly under control, if I hit cancel build up here, so you can leave your machine to network boot. Foreman will manage that file and keep it up to date, and therefore it will boot correctly. If it's set to be reinstalled, it will be. If it's set to um, not be installed at the moment, it's leave it alone, it'll just boot off its disk. Absolutely fine. We don't have a lot more to see here, um, but I will show you a couple of interesting things. We can take over these that we created earlier. So let's manage the form server itself. If I edit this, when you create a host from Puppet, it will be unmanaged because we can try and deal with any of that orchestration stuff. But I can hit this manage button up here. There we go. I've had a so I can go here and I can actually just quickly. I'm not intending to reinstall this host, but form a re Correct. Okay, so right now. So there we go. This is now managed. We've got information. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's get oops, let's get this one. What was it called? LC Bulan. Oh, random name generator. It's really, really random. <laughs> Looking, um, I've got. So there you go. DNS is working. DNS is here. that. Um, and I can do. I can do a, an ARPA, um PTR request as well. So it's all managed for me. I didn't touch a thing. The DHCP leases are there. TFTP is managed. DNS is managed. All fantastic. Nice. I was going to show some more VM stuff, but given um, the problems we're having with that desktop, I'm going to avoid it. So oh. um, I will, unless we've got any questions, I will do some computer resource stuff. Just let me uh, check real fast in the tweet deck. Um, uh, getting a big thumbs up from Josh Atwell. Other than that, uh, we are good to go. Fantastic. So the bit I think is probably interesting to most people is managing VMs, right? If you're doing bare metal, power to you, I love bare metal. I come from high performance computing. So mm. that, I love that stuff. But for most people, this is not an issue. Let's talk about compute resources. So to do compute resources, I've got to stop hitting that button. To, to do compute resources, we first need to enable them. They come as plugins, uh, separate packages to keep the dependencies on the Foreman packages down. So the first thing we need to do is yum install Foreman. Libvert. So I'm going to start with libvert uh, because this is already running on libvert. So let's give form and control over it. Now I'm going to do this in a super high key and secure way using a uh, key. Obviously, if you want to do a libvert, do it with certificates and TLS sockets and things. But just keep it quick. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm, I might show you cloud-like provider. I have a an OAuth in handy. So I can quickly show you something a bit more cloud-like as well. But we'll do this one real quick. Uh, what I will do is all can talk to the bit, see what's there, but also that it can turn them up for you so you have to create them. And that's really important because the, one of the ideas of Foreman is to provide a consistent UI regardless of what you're talking to. So if you want to spin things up on VMware or on EC2 or a physical host and you've got you know a, a, a hierarchy of people, those people further down the chain can do this if they've got good documentation, right? And if the UI is the same every time, and all they have to do is change that deploy on box. This is great. So that's installed. I'm not sure if it actually restarts Foreman automatically. Um, when you install plugins, you have to restart. But we can check. We go to the About page. We look at the provided. You see, the not installed. So uh, if you're familiar with Passenger, you can do a touch temp restart.txt. If that doesn't stick in your brain, uh, just restart Apache. Um, so Foreman runs in Apache by default. You will 
Pothole Insert that's been installed to EPC, but it's not used by default. It comes with the raw packages, but the installer configures a better way of doing things. So there you go, libvert uh, now installed. So we need to give Foreman access to libvert. And as I said, the way I'm going to do this is super hacky. So, uh, so sudo minus u foreman shell bash uh, ssh keygen That I might have guessed seeing it earlier is actually my host. Um, and I can do sudo minus i. So yeah, as I say, this is super hacky, right? But uh, for the purposes of Demo, because you're, you're doing all the federal helpful work to better than this. Well, that should now work. That in known hosts, good. And then first, the test you sapphire slash system. Oh, this is. I'm worried about one being running. Excellent. So, yeah, we can't do that. So that's fine. And that's the string. So let's go here. And the way we do this is again all the infrastructure under the infrastructure menu. With no encryption. So virtual machines, the options, they're all that's fantastic. We do have some support. So images are um, where you have something as a more cloud like where you've got AMIs or templates or whatever. Libvert does support this, but it requires a lot of setup in advance, so I haven't bothered. But hopefully I can quickly show you DigitalOcean in this. And compute profiles work like post groups, they're collections. The defaults, so I'm going to set one up, um, summary, um, it goes on the NAT net, net. Um, gig in image home GCAM. This is this. So, two things I can show you here. Firstly, let's add another host. Uh, I don't know, first I'm going to show you this button here before. Where is it? Um, I think I need to reload this. Here it is. Here it is. So Sapphire. There's this associated VMs button here. Um, what that does is it, it goes away to the compute resource and tries to match things that the compute resource reports with hosts already present in Foreman. Um, that gives you some extra stuff. And the way I'm going to show you this is I'm going to open this. Two things to point out. Firstly, this one has a model of standard PC and has a Feedback. Yeah. Five of this. Four VMs associated to the host. This by now. So it's using the name of the compute resource as the model. And if I reload this page, I have power state. Better, I have the console as well. Um, but it only works for host creating by form because it needs some extra config. So I, I don't expect this to work. It might. I expect to call this might. So let's So this is this what we did. I met host and we filled in the MAC address, right? Let me be Lewis already. What is with this name? So provision, deploy on Sapphire. And small compute profile, we're the same. Let's a quick look at this. Now here before we put the bank, because Libvert will provide that. That's got seven now. Yeah, so this has been filled out by our profile. Uh, so this is all correct. Uh, so you very quickly doing a set of things. Okay. 
And if I go here, I'm going to say yes. That is the fiddliest bit working. <laughs> nice. So you can actually call the little for all compute providers, right? It's very dependent on, on the compute resource. But for, for a few, this actually works. And you can see this booting to drucker and starting to actually Again, I'm not going to leave this to run because I suspect it's affecting my broadcast because it's downloading the drop cut image from the If you if you said I suspect that's affecting my broadcast, you are correct. Yes. That's going to be stopped. Um, yeah, three hundred megabytes, right? So, <laughs> right. It's uh, yeah. But let's do one that's turned off. We'll get rid of this one as well. outside of Foreman on the virt resource. But because we've now associated it to the VMs, we can manage it properly, and we can go back to our resource, have a look at the VM list, and it should be gone. I'm going to down here, it's deleted. So that is Foreman absolutely at breakneck speed, just within 45 minutes, I think, yes. Do you want me to do DigitalOcean as well, just real quick? Um, we we are rubbing on the top of the hour, but if it's uh, if it's fasting, then yeah, that would be fine. All right, let's try it. So real quick, yum, install Foreman Digital Ocean. I want to know. I, I believe quite people who are interested in AWS. I don't have an AWS, you know, on the on the V Brown bag, so mailing list. Um, what happened? Oh, it's I can't at the moment, so I can't show you AWS, but I can show you DigitalOcean, which isn't a million miles away, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get that in. Do you have any questions? Uh, Are you still there? You've gone silent. Sorry, I mean, I, I actually un I, I muted myself as opposed to unmuting myself. Hold on one second. Uh, checking the... Where are I'm, I'm sorry, say that again, please. Mm -hmm. I when that happens, I assume my connection dropping again. Uh, yeah, just just a little bit. It's uh, it's it's kind of weird. It, it's it stops and then it catches back up really fast. So I, I have to listen quickly. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk super fast as well. It's a Scottish. I'm not Scottish, but you pick up a habit around here. Oh, that's fine. I, I I'm a fast talker as well, and my wife is even like twice as fast as me. So it's ridiculous. Um, but uh, nope, nope. We're, we are clear for questions. You're good to go, sir. I'll just leave people here and here, and I will wrap this up. Yeah. So let's do this. My key don't worry, this is going on the broadcast because I'm going to revoke it afterwards anyway. Uh, region. Um, oh, yeah, I have hit load regions. And because. Okay, we'll pick London. So I can go to virtual machines or the my login accounts on the machine. I'll come up to really show that right now as whack. So we need an image. This is an image based system. So we'll just call it Sen DO and DOS architecture root. So, that one. And this is a flag here, I SSH versus user data, so this is where you can control that. So if you want SSH, leave that on ticked. I'm not going to let this run to completion anyway, so it doesn't matter. And that's fine, and then I'm going to go host on a new tab specifically, and you'll see that in a minute. So all the... All So I'm going to provision. I'm going to deploy on DigitalOcean. We don't go far for this. Now interfaces is a bit weird. It's mostly fine. The only thing we have to do is unset the subnet because we can't. We'll try. You know, Foreman will try and set a PTR for that because we've told it this subnet has PTR records, um, but that's not the IP address that the server is going to be on. Like one seven eight, a public address. Try and PTR it, and that'll fail. So we're going to we're going to unset the uh, but I'll tell you what, we're just going to unmanage this NIC entirely. Let's say for make sure the VM succeeds. 
otherwise this looks a little different so I'm not selecting an installation media now I'm selecting an image but otherwise it's exactly the same and provisioning templates start finish so this is the SSH script that would run and I can choose a region yeah yeah let's submit that So that's now running the address. It's going things wrong with the If I go back here and it's being set up at the moment, and eventually this will complete. That's all I wanted to show, just to give you this idea that it's a it's partly about consistent UI and consistent workflows, no matter what you're provisioning on. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you use Forum to do this, then you've got all that API command line tooling as well, so you can build on top of this for your workflow and if your back end changes nobody cares. Nice. Well that is me pretty much. I think I think that's as much as we can cram in. There is so much more I could talk about. Um, <laughs> but you know as you get the idea right, it's huge. Um, yeah. I mean, having talked about plugins, is. there's there's eighty plus plugins, some notable ones. There's Catello, which is all about managing content and errata for RPM systems. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Remote execution. Um, not a vulnerability, but actually the ability to go into systems and execute one-time or cron-like commands. Discovery I mentioned for doing some metal as a service. There's a variety of smaller plugins to handle little niggles. Um, I'm undoubtedly forgetting some huge ones right now, but yeah, there's like 80 of them, right? So now the proxy is pluggable, so you can manage input blocks with this if you don't want bind. Um, yeah, huge. It's it's ridiculous. There's there's a there's a uh, an embarrassment of riches here. That was fantastic, dude. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's it's very hard to cram this into an hour these days. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Um. I can, I can see why. Sorry. Yeah. So if there's no other questions, I I'll, I'll just say where to find us. Hmm. Um. So the form dot org, as you've already seen. Um. There is a community tab here. There's also a documentation tab. Check them both out. In particular, there is a support link here. It's a little bit buried at the moment. YouTube channel, you can find everything about our tracker. I'm going to link across the live IRC channel. I'll see you. IRC channel. If that doesn't speak to you, the mailing list is pretty good as well. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, so, so leave it on your um, on your, uh, your your Twitter handle and, and uh, connection information as well. Um, that that was uh, that was fantastic. So I, I definitely owe you a beer uh, next time I'm in Scotland, so that I can hear the the story of of your name. Um, I'm, that'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, and and that was that was an introduction to Foreman, uh, everyone. Um, again, thank thank you very much, uh, Greg, for for uh, an awesome an awesome demonstration. That was fantastic. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great. Cool. All right, and I'm.